Hey guys, Dave here, back in the garage. And what a day I've had. You know, I didn't know if I'd get to record this. Look at what's going on with my hair, I don't even know. Uh, I feel like I've just, I'm spiraling into a mess here. Um, eating bad, I gotta get back in the, in the eating good train. Oh, and then I just don't get car dealers. Anyways, this is a, a channel. Hold on, let me just get this all sorted. This is a channel where I sell stuff on eBay, whatnot, other reselling platforms. I've just, you know, it's been an interesting day. I got this in the mail today. This is uh, from the IRS. Is it the IRS? North Carolina State Department of Revenue. It's so annoying because like very last minute, I got all my tax stuff done. Like I think April 14th, right before I went on my trip to Vegas, all the tax stuff was done. All I had to do was write a check to the North Carolina Department of Revenue, put it in a folder and send it. And my accountant even gave me the pre-addressed label. He made it that easy for me, guys. That easy, and yet I still screwed it up. So there's that. I wanna talk about car dealers too, because I just had quite an experience at one, and I'll tell you, it was frustrating. But, you know, I get that back, that thing from the Department of Revenue in North Carolina, and they wanted me to do this thing. So I owed them money. I think I owed them like $400 for North Carolina. And I only lived in North Carolina for two months that last year, and yet I still owed them $400. But anyways, that's besides the point. I forgot to sign the check. <laughs> so I sent it like three days before it was too late, and it went all the way there and all the way back. It is now April 27th, and it's back in my mailbox, and they put a little note saying, you didn't sign the check. So very frustrating. <laughs> Hopefully there's not any fees, but there might be fees and who knows what else. But yeah, I'm just like, I had McDonald's tonight, which is never a good plan. I've been drinking caffeine, which is not good. I'm falling off the wagon. This is not good, guys. I need some encouragement to uh, be better. Oh, uh, that's weird. My SKU for this next item, I accidentally put $38.99, which is not even what I sold it for. So I'm not sure how that happened. <sighs> Anyways, so it's Thursday. I was supposed to record this last night, but what happened? Oh, I went to a car dealer. The car dealer thing is messing up my whole schedule, I'll be honest with you. So when Tina's car, if you're new here, my wife, her name is Tina, and she went on a family trip, well, not me, because I was here redoing my whole garage, up to West Virginia and North Carolina to see her family. And when she was on the highway, something went wrong with our truck, and it like blew a line, like just a line fell off the transmission. We thought the tranny had broken, but in fact, it was just the, the transmission line fell off or whatever. But this was actually really bad because she was in the, the fast lane going super fast and the car just stops working and she has to cross three lanes of traffic to get off to the side of the road and she ends up stopping where there's like no breakdown lane. There's this whole nightmare where she was very stressed out and the kids were stressed out. She had the kids, I wasn't there. I don't know what's, I'm just gonna leave it. This is my little cowlick here, isn't it silly? That's why sometimes I gel my hair. Anyways, that whole thing happened. And so we had talked about it and decided, hey, we'll probably get a different car at some point, which obviously we don't need a new car. We spent 2000 something, was it 2000? You guys probably remember better than me. To fix the truck, we had to spend a thousand to get it towed and rent a car for her to get home. It was like a $3,000, $4,000 experience because we had to get a hotel. It was expensive, it was frustrating and expensive. And so she just kind of hates the car now and I kind of hate it too. We're a little bitter towards the, the Dodge. And so I said, hey, you know, when things settle, when we get back from Vegas, we'll look for a new car for you. Try not to spend much, do most of the braking because the Dodge still has good value. They fixed it up, it runs fine, it's in good condition. So the whole idea is like, let's get a car. You know, maybe after fees and all that, we spend like 5,000 bucks on a new car, right? A different car, not new, but different. I don't buy brand new cars, but a different car. And just pay that cash. I own my truck outright. I spent a long time paying it off. I don't want to go into debt for a new vehicle. So the goal is to just get another vehicle, spend like five grand, et cetera, et cetera. This sold, this is a tech deck dude. I got this at an estate sale where I got a bunch of Disney stuff. This sold on eBay for 25 bucks and we paid 40 for all the tech decks and I've already sold one for like 20 or 15. So we're broken even and I've got a bunch left and they have pretty good value, so. That's exciting. By the way, I shipped a bunch of whatnot. We did a whatnot hat auction. I actually didn't get through all the hats. I still have a bunch, so we'll do another hat auction soon. But uh, we did, what, what did we do? Like um, maybe 80 or 90 items sold for like 650 bucks. So we did pretty good. 
you know, a bunch of people have been negatively commenting on my video saying, hey Dave, why are you buying stuff that sells for less than $15? It's for whatnot, generally. Either it's old footage or it's for whatnot. So most of the stuff I buy that's under 15, uh, or that I don't know for sure it's worth more than 15, because sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I'm just buying. Uh, I put it on whatnot, because a lot of times I'll sell something on whatnot. I probably sold half those hats last night for two to three bucks a piece. So it's not a lot of money, but it adds up if you can buy in bulk and things like that. Anyway, so we want to get a car. And so last night, Wednesday, we said, okay, right after work, Dave, we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna go check out some cars. Now, Tina knows what she wants. Now, this is like, I call this rental syndrome, okay? Uh, resell to Rome shelf. I got a bunch of new stickers, guys, as well. Thank you for the uh, sending them. Oh, I've got packages. I've got so much to talk about. I don't wanna make a 50 minute episode again, so we'll see. Maybe I'll spread it among two episodes, but yeah. We got Blood, Sweat, and Cell Leroy sticker here. We got the big door prize sticker. Uh, what else did we get? We got the happy picker and the grumpy picker over here. We've got, let's see, Dixie Flipper, met him in Vegas. Let's see, anything else new? Yeah, Inked Picker. We got Alicia's sticker. Jay's Toy Shop, R Running for the King. Uh, SSK Promo, we got a sticker. What is this one? Oh, we already did Binks Box, Mooks. Oh, we got two RFTK ones. I gotta fix that. This is the Hot Duke, and then the Reseller Clickbait Podcast. So, a whole bunch of new stickers. But yeah, so, anyways. Uh, let me pull, what am I pulling? Oh, this S.A. Lauder powder box. This is cool. Someone uh, had recognized my channel. I'm sure you guys saw the footage. And it's where I got all those cars, too. And he said, oh, I've got something good for you. He sold me these for four bucks a piece. It's S.A. Lauder powder box, brand new. Never been used. It smells like powder. Um, sold that for $46 for one. I actually got two, four bucks a piece. So that's going to be a nice little profit. Definitely cool of the viewer to tell me about that. Anyway, so... You know, the first step of getting a different car is determining what kind of car you want. And, you know, Tina, the rental syndrome I was talking about, when her car broke down, she rented a car to come home. And she had rented a, es not, not an Escalade, a Expedition, a Ford Expedition. And of course, whenever you rent a car, they give you like the highest model with all the bells and whistles. You know, the $80,000 car is the one they give you when you rent a car. And so it was very nice. It was a very nice car. The big thing about that car though for Tina was she really liked the space for the kids. Because in the back of the Dodge Ram, the three kids who are getting bigger and bigger, you know, Elijah's almost 16 now, or almost 15. I don't even know my own kid's age. And he's taller than me. He's like 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, I think this is it. 19255, five. is that right? Yeah, that's right. There's a train we sold. It's an eerie uh, double door box car. Sold it for $14.99 plus shipping. So yeah, anyway, she really liked that the Expedition had all this. It has three rows, got plenty of room for big legged children and stuff like that. And so she wants an expedition, right? And so we're looking and expeditions are really expensive. And so we're like, okay, what other SUVs are there? So basically we ended up Wednesday night going and just like looking at cars and trying to figure out what would work. There's the Hyundai, Hyundai Palisade. That's what it was. There's Hyundai Palisade, Palisade. There's the Kia Telluride. There's the Armada. There's all these different big cars. So anyways, the idea was to just go look at cars. And so we did that and, uh, We've been also looking on CarMax for like the last two weeks for Tahoes and Expeditions and full-size SUVs, right? And anyways, I mean, that's that's really besides the point. The point really is car dealers. I am like tired of car dealers. And it made me wonder if like resellers, if we are like car dealers. I don't think we are, but it did seem like an interesting thought because like, I don't, some dealerships are just out to get you. <laughs> Which, which of course made me think, are resellers out to get the most money possible? Like, should I really be mad at car dealerships for trying to get the most money out of me as possible? I think it just bothers me because like, I feel like they're, I don't know, I'm trying to find a train. I feel like they're almost insulting me because, okay, so I bought the Ram at CarMax because I got fed up with car dealers. So I went to CarMax. Now CarMax will give you they don't do any haggling, right? They just say, hey, this is what we'll give you. This is how much our car is. No haggle. It is what it is, blah, 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 right? And you don't always get the most for your trade-in. You don't necessarily get the cheapest price on the car, but it's easy. There's no fighting. It's very clear what you're gonna get. 16043, where is this thing? So I like that. And so I, I think I remember saying to myself, self, if you ever buy a car again, do CarMax because it's just less stressful, more enjoyable, and, uh, you know, not gonna get you triggered, which I totally got triggered tonight a little bit, guys. 16043, I found it. Oh, my phone's ringing. Probably Brandon. But I'm not gonna talk now. He's got bad timing if it's him. Let's check. Yeah, it is, he's got bad timing. All right, this train sold. This is a, uh, you know, I think this guy might've bought all of these. It is a Illinois Central illuminated combo car tested. 
Okay, 16044 and once, yeah, they're all the same family of cars. So, anyways, I found, I found a car. I found a car that Tina liked. And, you know, I found it on CarMax. This was after testing a bunch of cars, right? We found a car that Tina liked and said, oh, here's one on CarMax that we can get. Now, we'll have to get it shipped here. But the price is decent and we can look and say, oh, we're gonna spend X dollars on this car after our trade-in. So let's say it's $5, right? 16042. And these are the other two. This one person bought all three. I'm gonna combine shipping. Uh, they were $26, $18, and $22 for those three. Okay, so let's just, for easy math, we'll say, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to say this. All right, here we go. We got two batteries. Both the batteries are on sale. Okay, one is, $15, one is $14, okay? $15, $14. I'm gonna trade in my water bottle for one of these batteries. The same battery, same car. Same battery, but just different dealers. One is CarMax and one's like a standard dealer, right? Same car. Actually, the one on CarMax has less miles, right? Well, you know, the CarMax one is $1 more. It's $15 versus $14. And I've got my $10 bottle of water to trade in. CarMax, Toyota have both said, hey, that water bottle is worth $10. Okay, so this is this known quantity of the water bottles worth $10. We got two cars, one's for why am I explaining this? I just wanna explain it because it's so frustrating. So we find the two cars, we find the one on CarMax late at night, like midnight, and I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna order that. It costs $200 to get it shipped, but it's exactly what we want. It's $15, which is how much we wanna spend. And so we're just gonna order that. And then as I'm sitting there in a boring work meeting, I see another car pop up at a local dealer. It's only $14, it's the same car. Slightly more miles, but it's, you know, it's a dollar cheaper. And so I, I was like, oh, I wonder what they'd give me for my bottle of water. <laughs> and I go on their website and their website says, oh, bring your bottle of water and we'll give you $13. $13 for your bottle of water and then a $14 car, I'm only gonna have to pay a dollar to get this new car, this new battery. <laughs> that makes sense, right? That's a good analogy. Um, so that's all good, right? Cause I already, already have ordered the car on CarMax, but I, or the battery on CarMax, but I haven't completed the deal. I've just spent the $200 to get it shipped. There's still like a whole process to get it done in a week when the car slash battery arrives at CarMax. And I know that my out the door price at CarMax is gonna be $5 because it's a $15 battery, $10 ba bottle of water, $5 is the difference. That's what I have to pay. There is no surprises when checking out at CarMax, but you go to the car dealer, okay? With the $1 cheaper battery, you know, the standard like big giant Johnson Chevrolet, that kind of place, right? Uh, you go to the big car dealer who has the $1 cheaper battery <laughs> car, and you've got the same bottle of water that you know is worth $10. And when you put the two things together and you spend two hours there, they come out with this stupid sheet of paper with all these different fees and fines and docking charges and et cetera, et cetera. And they say, hey, you know what? Your bottle of water is only worth $5. And somehow via magical math, you're gonna have to pay $15 for this battery. <laughs> Like that's, that's how ridiculous it was. Remember at CarMax, this is a dumb analogy. I should have just used the cars, it'd be easier. Cause now I'm losing my numbering. Anyways, at CarMax, basically I'm out the door for five bucks on a car that's a dollar more. And for some reason at the car dealership, it's 15 bucks for a car that's $1 less. Anyways, it was very upsetting because it didn't make any sense. And when I looked, so I said, okay, you're only giving me five for the water bottle. That's the first problem. You know, everyone else is offering me 10 for the water bottle, so fix that. And they fix that, of course, after they say like 10 times, oh, it's not possible to fix that. This is the excuse they said. CarMax can give you more for your water bottle because they sell cars to California and California people have more money. <laughs> this is the excuse they gave me, which was just totally ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. And I said, but Toyota also offered me $10 for my bottle of water. And he's like, well, I don't know how they did that. There's no way we can offer you that. And when I threatened to leave, the sales manager, the floor manager comes out and says, oh, I can give you $10 for that bottle of water. And you know, Tina and the kids got a little annoyed with me because I was irritated and I said, I'm not interested in playing games, guys. Just give me my car keys and let me leave because I don't really want to do business with you if this is how we're going to start the deal where you're intentionally lowballing me and you're also jacking up the price with $5,000 in random fees that are not advertised. He wrote down, just as an example of this kind of dealership, because you've all been to the dealerships like this, right? So it's a, remember I said, this is a $14 battery, this is a $15 battery. When he comes in, we first start like to actually, once we decide we like the battery, he comes in, he writes on a paper, so as you know, this car is $16. So now it's gone from $1 cheaper to the CarMax, from the CarMax one, to $1 more expensive. And I'm like, but no, on your website, it says it's $14. 
And he says, yeah, but there's this little section at the bottom that says that that's the online price, which doesn't include blah, 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 blah. Which just somehow jacks up the price two dollars, two grand, um, out of the blue, and that's the starting point. And then he comes back with the, anyways. <laughs> Let's just say, I got frustrated at the car dealership today. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. Where else can I vent? This is where I have to vent. You know, my wife and kids said that I was too mean, and I probably was because I was pretty irritated. And I told the guy, I said, "Listen, it's nothing to do with you." It's just, what I'm saying is I don't really want to work with a dealership who's intentionally trying to lowball me, knowing that they will make plenty of money if they're just remotely fair. But then I was like, dude, Dave, you're such a hypocrite. Such a hypocrite. Because if that's the case, when I go to yard sales and I say, I'll give you 40 bucks for all the tech decks, maybe all the commenters are right. Maybe I should be like, well, I know I'm going to get 400 for them. I should offer them 250. So am I really any better? I'm just a car dealer, guys. It's really kind of depressed me today. Star Wars, <laughs> uh, C-3PO sold, and I paid, I think, $5 for it. It sold for $39.99 plus shipping. Should I have paid him 20? That's what I'm expecting from the car dealer. So do I have any right to be mad? They're just being capitalists and making as much money as possible, and I'm being a baby. The fact of the matter is that I just know they were trying to screw me, and that's why it irritated me. If I didn't know any better, I'd probably be like all the people who gave this dealership 4.7 stars because they don't know they got screwed. <laughs> but they did get a car and they paid a price they were willing to pay. So again, I don't know. I have no point. My point is <sighs> car dealers. I think, you know what I think bothered me the most though? And I know some resellers can be like this too, is the like blatant dishonesty. Like going out of your way to be dishonest. That's what I think bothered me the most. Like. And this happened for the last two days as we were talking to dealerships, right? You message them and say, hey, I see you have this car. How much is it? Or is it in stock? And they'll always say, yeah, it's in stock. Come, let's take a look. And then you get there and it's not there. That happened a bunch on Wednesday night and it happened a bunch today to Tina because she went to dealerships and they were supposedly holding a car for her and then the car wasn't there. When we get there, there was, there was three cars we wanted to look at. And of course, the only one that was in stock when we got there was the most expensive one. The one that we're like, yeah, we probably can't afford that one. But, you know, we'll look at it too, just to kind of see the difference, right? And that's the only car that was in stock. And the thing that's crazy is we texted them and said, are they actually available? And they said, they haven't sold, right? You see the tricky wording there? They haven't sold. But when we get there, we're, he's like, well, you know, the first one is, uh, we send it off to auction today. So, and that price was wrong. We'd never sell a car for that cheap. Well, it was on your website that cheap. Okay, and then the second one, which means that car is probably not even real. Okay, that's just a scam to get people to come in. Second of all, the second car is up on stands in the shop because they're doing an inspection right now and we can't get it off the stand. So I can't really even show you that. But we do have this one, the most expensive one. And I just instantly, I'm like, oh my gosh, liar. <laughs> And so that's how we started. But then this is like just Dave ranting about car dealerships because this is so frustrating. We get to the car. The car is pretty nice. I say, can we turn it on? He's like, oh yeah, I didn't get the key. I was like, okay, fine. Can you get the keys? Like, yeah. So he goes and gets the keys. It takes like five minutes. We're just sitting out there and it's starting to rain on us, right? He gets the key and he comes back and it doesn't turn on, right? It says key fob not detected on the car dash or whatever. You know, because these cars now, they don't have like a stick in key. They've got the button. And so it says key fob not detected. And so I said, hey, seems like the key fob might be dead or wrong because it's not detecting. He's like, no, no, the car's battery's dead. I'm like, well, then why are the lights on and why is it saying key fob not directed? I don't, or not detected. I don't think the battery's dead. I think the key fob has something wrong with it. And he's like, no, no, I'm gonna go get a jump box. I'm gonna jump the car. I'm like, it's not gonna work because the battery's not dead. <laughs> Hence the lights turning on, the dash all on, all this other stuff. And he's like, no, 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 it's the battery. And so he goes and he gets a new battery jump box. And you know, we're sitting out there, it's drizzling on us doesn't start of course key fob not detected he's in there he's watching youtube videos of how to start it you know even if the the battery is dead or even if the key fob's battery is dead because the only key for the car right <laughs> this is uh, anyways all that to to say like 30 minutes later of us sitting there in the drizzle he's like you know what i just talked to my manager it's the wrong key fob i'm like yeah that's what i said <laughs> uh, we're having fun <laughs> Uh, anyways, so he goes and gets the re-key fob, and it's a nice car, but again, this is the same car that I've already pre-ordered on CarMax. It actually is the same exact car, like, same trim level, same model, same everything, right? The only difference is the one on CarMax has less miles. And, again, the CarMax one was supposed to be a little more expensive, but once all the numbers played out, the CarMax one was, like, ten bucks cheaper, right? Ten, ten thousand dollars 
was cheaper, let's be honest. <laughs> it was a lot cheaper at CarMax. Even though the sticker price was higher at CarMax, all the hidden fees, the dock fees, the, the dealer transfer fee, all these other fees added up to thousands and thousands of dollars at this dealership. And so that's why I didn't, you know, that combined with just like the chain of events that led up to it and the dishonesty made it so like, I was pretty rough. Basically when he brought out the deal, I said, nah, man, no, nah, that's, we're too far apart. Thank you for checking, but uh, I don't think we're gonna come to a deal. Can I just get my keys? I think I'm gonna go. And he just would not give me my keys. He would not give me, I said, listen, it's nothing against you. It's just, you know, with that offer, we're too far apart, right? I have another car that's gonna be just like this and I'm gonna have it next week and it's gonna be, you know, 10 bucks cheaper, right? It just doesn't make sense for me to buy this one. He's like, yeah, but what can I do? You know, I'm not gonna give you your key because I think we can come to a deal. You know, we can meet in the middle. I said, the middle is not gonna work. <laughs> Like, we're so far off, it's not gonna work. And this car has more miles. There's no world where it happens. But he just wouldn't give me my key, he wouldn't give me my key, and so finally I said, listen. Oh, and, and he said, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Like, you know, what's killing the deal? I said, well, I told you, like, the offer doesn't make sense, and if that's our starting point, I don't feel like we can meet in the middle. And so I just want my keys. Like, well, so what did I do wrong? I'm like, you didn't do anything wrong except for not giving me my key, which I keep asking you for. <laughs> And then uh, the best thing though was when, what am I looking for? I'm so distracted. I think this is it. The best thing was when he was like telling me, oh yeah, CarMax can give you more money because they sell their cars to California. We can't really match that. And Martina shows them Toyota had matched it and done better without us even asking them to match it. They just came back with that same offer, $10 for the water bottle, remember? And he's like, oh, I don't think we could do that. And then as they get me my key, the sales manager comes out and of course says, oh yeah, we can give you 10 bucks for that water bottle. No problem, you know, we talked to the man. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm not even gonna record an episode, I'm so triggered. But then I was like, you know, I'm gonna record an episode because I'm so triggered. Merry Christmas to all, Lionel Boxcar sold for $26 plus shipping. But it does make you think, like how is what the deal, I, I guess, okay, there is a big difference, okay? The difference in what we're doing, reselling, going to garage sales, paying as little, po little as possible and selling for as much as possible, is that we're not like blatantly lying to people the whole time, you know? and. A, it is pretty similar though. I'm trying to justify it guys, but we're, we're basically car dealers. <laughs> Talk me off the ledge guys, are we car dealers? Uh, and if you're a car dealer, no offense, there's good car dealerships. I've been to them and it's not only CarMax that I like. I've been to, there was a Toyota dealer up in Cary that I thought was pretty honest and pretty good. And, oh, and no, the Subaru dealer was actually really good. But there's other dealers up there in North Carolina that I had a horrible time with. I'm not gonna say it's always Ford dealers, but I'm looking at you, Ford. <laughs> uh, anyways, what do you think, guys? Are we as bad as car dealers? There also is like, there's a slime factor. <laughs> that sounds mean, but there's like just certain car sales people that I, I've met that I'm just like, oh, this person, everything they're saying to me is a lie. And that guy tonight like was very much, and, and just sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. I mean, I don't think I said it yet, but one of the big things I noticed was this car had tinting on the front windows, right? And the tinting was very dark. And now I've, I've fallen into this trap before where I bought a car with tinting and the tinting was illegal. It was too dark to be legal. And so when I went to register my car or inspect my car, they actually said I had to get that tinting taken off before it passed inspection. That's happened to me before, right? And so I'm familiar with this and I'm, I was concerned about this. Also, the windshield was cracked, which they said, oh, your insurance will fix that, which I don't know. I feel like the dealership should fix it before selling the car. And that's a little shady to try to get someone's insurance to do it. But anyways, I said it to him. I said, hey, aren't these windows too tinted to be legal? And he's like, oh, you know, you, you might be right. You might be right. Yeah, it's an interesting point. Yeah, like he knew, but he wasn't going to bring it up. No, no. He was gonna try to try to just let it happen. And <laughs> anyways, six orders, three hundred twenty-eight dollars. That's all we've got. But one of the orders had three items on it. Fifty-four dollars is the average sales price per order. It's a little less if you think per item. I don't know. Now I feel like a car dealer. Ugh. I hope I'm not a car dealer. I guess you know what it does bring to light is there's an importance in honesty. I think that's all that can really separate us, right? That's all that can really separate us is a, is a goal to be honest with people, you know? And uh, I'm not saying we need to pay, you know, way more than we should to make a profit. We need to stay in business, just like the car dealers need to stay in business. But at the same time, like, they were 
deliberately trying to take advantage of me. And I've been to dealers like that. And, I, you know, can you blame them? They're just starting at the most beneficial point for them. Just like when you go to a yard sale and say, I'll give you a dollar for that video game that you know is worth 100 And they come back and they say, uh, how about 10 And you say, okay, I'll give you 10 because I know I'm going to get 100 It's really not that much different, but it still triggered the crap out of me. And again, I think it was because of all the lying leading up to it that it really triggered me. But anyways, I have an exciting piece of news, guys. We have ordered <laughs> a bunch of new friends. Death Pile Support Piggies are back in, in the house. And here's the cool thing. Death Pile Support Pig, this is me. I'm going to do my car salesman pitch, okay? The Death Pile Support Pig, the, the window tinting is fine on it, guys. <laughs> It starts right up, it's super reliable, great safety ratings, all that stuff. And it's available now for the low, low price of $25 on uh, ncflipper.com. So here's actually the cool thing though. The cool thing about this piggy is he's been upsized. Okay, we've upsized our piggy, just like Tina wants to upsize her car, we've upsized the piggy. And the reason for that is because my death pile, as you guys know, who have been watching, is bigger than ever. It's a giant death pile. This was the old death pile support pig, but he just didn't feel like he could handle the size of the death pile. That's why I had to have like three or four of them. This guy though, look at that size difference. He can really handle a big death pile. So there you go, there's my car salesman pitch. Get your NC piggy at ncflipper.com. Limited quantities, while supplies last. Wait, uh, voidware prohibited, what else do they say? Oh dude, have you ever gotten that, that car scam where they send you like a lotto ticket, like a scratcher? And then, of course, every time you scratch, it's like, you have won! Come to the dealership to get your prize. And then you go there, and they just try to pitch you a car. He said this to me. I don't think I said this yet. When I get there, I said, hey, I looked up my trading value on your website, and it says it'll give me 13 bucks for this. When I get there, and he's like, oh, yeah, well, our trading, our website's not really right about that. It just kind of says whatever to get you to come in. You know, we're not really going to offer you what the website told you. And it's like, so your whole business is built upon lies. Everything you're doing is based on lies. Uh, anyways, I'm, I'm still very triggered by them. Anyways, needless to say, I'm gonna wait for CarMax to deliver the car in a week, and then we'll go buy it for the price that I already know, and that makes complete sense, and has all the fees that make sense, the tax, title transfer, all that stuff. And Tina will have a different car, and we will all live happily ever after, and I'll be a little bit broker. But yeah, the whatnot auction was fun. I actually am doing another whatnot auction tomorrow, which I'll probably edit this video, so it'll be tonight for you, Friday. Tonight, it's Thursday for me, Thursday night late. Not super late, maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Uh, but I'm, I'm planning on editing this tonight and uploading it. But yeah, we're gonna auction off all these plushies tomorrow night. Uh, and not Tina's bottle of coconut water. But yeah, all these plushies are going for sale tomorrow night on my whatnot, link down below. And even if you don't wanna buy, guys, I am streaming it on YouTube again. People seem to really be enjoying watching the streams on YouTube kind of just like for the entertainment factor, not to bid, just to kind of hang out with me. Usually I have Tina out here and she's cracking jokes, so it's always fun when she's out here with me. Uh, this is it, this is the episode. <laughs> what a weird episode. Uh, whatever. Thank you for watching. This is Ansi Flipper, guys. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed this crazy content. Bye-bye.